and welcome to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three in the UK. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all about home education in the United Kingdom and neurodivergent family life. And if you are a returning viewer or subscriber, you already knew that, but welcome back all the same. So today I want to talk specifically about home educating neurodivergent children. I have three children, as I said, Charles is 12, Bessie is 10 and Albert is seven. And all three of them are on a spectrum somewhere. Charles and Bessie were both diagnosed with ASD or autism spectrum disorder um, several years ago now. I think they sometimes say autism spectrum condition now as well, but we just like to say autistic in this house. They are autistic. Uh, Albert is on a waiting list, the never ending waiting list to be diagnosed as well. Charles is also on the waiting list to be referred for ADHD assessment as well. And I highly suspect in the future, at least I will be I will be um, asking the GP to refer both, both Bessie and Albert for ADHD assessment as well, because, or um, the boys, I'm pretty sure ADHD, and I'm pretty sure Bessie would be classed, I think in America, maybe you would class it as ADD, rather than there's no H in Bessie, just the, just the, just the rest of it. So this is something actually I am, it's the 13th tomorrow, I am having my results for my AD, my own ADHD assessment. So we are a full neurodent household. Um, I think the phrase that someone I know who also suspects they're neurodiverse decided to use the words chock full of neurodiversity. So we are a house that is chock full of neurodiversity. Um, so I wanted to share the big tips that I use on a regular basis to get through my home educating day uh, and, and you know, just my just general general things that I use that make home education for my children successful. So number one is make use of sensory toys and equipment. So for example, uh, we have the usual fidgets, fidget spinners, poppets. Um, here's one on the table right now. I hate the noise, so forgive me if you do too. <coughs> Um, I hate those, but my son loves them, Albert loves them. Um, so anything like that, you can get wobble boards that they can stand on, um, kind of like yoga yoga balls, but um, they're kind of flat. They're like a wobble board, but they're inflatable and you can just rock backwards and forwards on it with your feet. Um, uh, those are really good for needing to move whilst you're sitting still, or even just having a small yoga ball that you put, or just a football that you can put your feet on that you can move backwards and forwards with your feet. Those are really handy and keeping focus in learning is something that I also, I have an article to write uh, this week and I will be utilizing that. I'm going to borrow uh, Albert's football and I'm gonna have that under my feet so it help me focus. The second point is allow them to follow their interests. Now, this is specifically for um, autistic children, not specific, sorry, it's not specifically for autistic children, it's for ADHD children as well, because, um, autistic children, in my experience with my children, um, they, they are tending to always have, um, several special interests that stay, and they're always really the same, that's where the, the autism comes into play, they have special interests that are, um, important to them throughout, and they don't leave. Um, and then the ADHD side comes in that there's special interests that come and go very quickly and they'll master it or they'll master it enough and then suddenly it's the most boring thing in the whole world. So um, we have both sides of the coin in this house and um, it, uh, yeah, so that's that's my thing. Sometimes we have, we have consistent things. So if I wanna get Charles writing, for example, I will use Minecraft or Pokemon. Like those um, are always good ones. Actually, the Curious Monkey resources, they do an amazing, um, Pokemon activity book and Minecraft numeracy and literacy books and they are the absolute bomb for my gang they absolutely love them so um, that works really really well for my boys uh, my daughter would be like why are you giving me this but if you gave her one that was about um, Disney princesses still or anything that's more girly she would be totally on it and, and she would probably like Minecraft as well but maybe just not as much as so following their interests and incorporating them into home education is really, really useful and it can definitely help when you've got a subject that they find trickier. So um, I've, we've done, I've designed a whole writing course, um, excuse me, are using resources from Twinkle and I just made it all about Pokemon. It's like, you've got to write an art, a newspaper article about Pokemon, you've got to write email about Pokemon, it's all had to be about Pokemon. Um, and it worked really, really well. Number three is work out their learning style. This is really, really important. Um, so my youngest is 
and has always been a kinesthetic learner. A kinesthetic, I can never say it. I'll write it. Yeah, there you go. Um, which means he loves to move. He loves to be doing. He loves to have a go. And that's how he learns best. If you just tell him or if you give him verbal give him verbal instructions or if you tell him uh, give him written instructions he doesn't just get it in the same way whereas if he's actually experimenting or he's actually doing it himself it stays in the brain whereas my other two children are probably a mix between kinesthetic learners and and visual learners they like to be able to see it um and do it they like to be able to work it out for themselves but if you just give them verbal instructions they really really struggle processing that and that just never a good result i'll be like what did i just say and they'll be like i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> number four is fine find social groups that align with their needs this can be really really hard um if your child is very anxious as well as neurodivergent and um a lot of these things will work if they're just very school opposed as well um but yeah it's there's a lot of neurodivergent people in the home edu in the home education community um most of the families i know have at least one neurodivergent person if not the entire family they just haven't been diagnosed yet or it's not kind of on their radar yet um but yes lots of people they're, they're we're everywhere we're everywhere and we're all through the home education community all the brands all the brands all the flavors of neurodiversity we're all there oh no, um, but you know, and if you are in local home education groups and there isn't one that fits yet, make it yourself. You can do it. And I know if you're neurodivergent too, or you are have maybe have uh, anxiety, that's going to be really, really hard for you. Trust me, I know. Um, but you can do this, and it will be better in the long run because you will make friends who are probably neurodivergent too. And actually, that's been the best for me as a home educating parent is finding parents who have similar um needs and struggles that i do because they just get it and it's just <laughs> number five is focus on progress and not the national curriculum's goals um if you start comparing your child um and this is probably good if your child's neurotypical and home educated don't focus on the neuro the um the national curriculum goals uh focus on your own personal goals that you're setting with your child and the progress towards those um I found it really hard because my my daughter is um, is maybe not where she would be with reading and writing if she if not not if she wasn't autistic. I'm saying if she wasn't at school, but that's a load of rubbish. She probably would be there at school. It would be exactly the same. Um, but she's progressing all the time, and she does it in, independently, autonomously, more and more and oh can i read that to you can i read that to albert or let me write that down i'll just write this down like all the time now and we've just not pushed it so um but the progress that she's gone from hating it and not being able to to starting to enjoy it and actually being able to write things is just very exciting and her reading has come on loads and loads because we haven't pushed it and that's the thing that she's taught me within her neurodiversity is she can't be pushed if i push her the more i push her the worse it gets and but it's 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 really exciting to see her progress and see her reading age go up and her writing ability get better like it's really cool <laughs> final bit of advice and this is something that i struggle in being adhd probably is uh establish a routine and i find it really hard but our routine is that we do home ed every day we do not have a day off um there is something educational happening every day whether that's just reading or whether it's the whole shebang um something something educational is happening every single day every, every single day every single day uh because if not then it'll be like a week or we haven't done anything so doing something every day definitely works best for us so i hope you have found those tips useful and um they are certainly like my biggest ones that i think work the best for us in our house uh what are your top tips if you're watching this and you have neurodivergent children or you suspect you have neurodivergent child or children tell me what your top tip would be if you were making a video like this one don't forget to check me out on tiktok uh also adventure all the way or emma home education uk um my handle is adventure all the way but my name is emma home education uk and it's got my lovely face so you'll know it's me <laughs> um and i'm on instagram as well that's adventure all the way as well 
If you have any concerns or queries or you need any help at all, please don't be afraid to reach out to me, TikTok, Instagram, or my email, all of which are in the description below. Um, I really, really love to hear from you if you need anything. Um, I made a TikTok recently where I talked about a, a mum I met recently whose son has, has to go back to school and it's absolutely heartbreaking. And what I would really, really like is to prevent that from happening to anyone else. Um, I offer a free one-time consultation um, service within my home ed consulting um, that I can, and I can, we can do anything in that moment. I can just chat with you. I can help you write reports. I can do any of those things. Um, and I'm always available for free via email. Um, might not, I might reply to you slowly, slower. So if it's urgent, um, go onto my pay hip shop and, oh, my tummy's gurgling, excuse me. Go onto my pay hip shop and um, purchase the home ed consultancy. The first appointment is always free. Um, and if you would like more, then there is a small fee, but it's very small just to cover my time. Um, but if you need help and you need help urgency, urgently, go and do that. Um, and there's a whole form. And if it's urgent, you can do that. And I will get back to you that day, um, if not within 24 hours. So the, the offer, the service is there. You can use it if you want to. And follow up appointments are very, very cheap. Um, but they, they're there if you need them. So that's something that's on my pay hip shop. It's, it's there if you need it. And so don't be afraid to ask for help. Take care and I will see you very, very soon. Like and subscribe. Bye.